This is called electronics release. Today we'll be discussing about diode. So this is one of the uh, very basic components which you know every electronic engineer or every electronic hobbyist uses first time. So what is a diode? A diode is a two terminal device which allows current to pass only one direction. And even the symbol of diode is represented in the same way. It's an arrow with a line. So this is a diode. So this is how a diode is represented. And a diode looks uh, more like a cylinder, like this. I think I'll show you a diode. So this is a diode. This is a power diode. Uh, so that's the reason it's so big. Uh, usually, you know, the commercial diodes are quite small. So this is a diode. Uh, as you can see, there's a cylindrical uh, a device with a line on one side. So this is a black device with a gray line on one side, indicating which is this this line. So uh, as I said, it allows current to pass only in one direction and this is called a cathode and this is the anode of a diode. So uh, what can we compare this uh, example to? Say for example, you are blowing air into a balloon. Okay, so you are blowing air into a balloon and you want uh, the balloon to take in air but when you leave the balloon, the air should come out. So what can you do for that? You will put a one-way valve here where when you blow the air inside, it will allow the air to go in but when, when you don't blow air, it won't allow the air inside or the pressure inside to come out. In the same way, this diode operates. So when you allow current to flow in, it will go this side but when you allow the current from the other side, say from, for example like this, this will stop it. It won't allow the current to flow on the opposite side. So, uh, talking about the construction of a diode, a diode is usually made of two materials, either silicon or germanium. So, silicon or germanium based on the forward uh, voltage drop. This I'll tell you later what this forward voltage drop actually means. So, you can make it with silicon or germanium. Say, for example, I take a block of silicon. Okay, so I'll consider it as two halves of the same silicon material but what I will do is on the first half uh, uh, before saying that you know, as you know these two are semiconductors so it's, so what is a semiconductor is uh, a conductor is a complete uh, has very low resistance ideally zero similarly an insulator has very high resistance uh, ideally infinity so semiconductor is something which lies in between so, so this is a semiconductible uh, material so that is silicon, that is a semiconductor and this semiconductor in first half I will be introducing electrons in the other half I will be introducing holes so hole doesn't mean literally a hole a hole is uh, where an electron is removed from you know when there is an electron in one position say for example if I remove this electron from that place, it forms a hole there. That's somewhat like a vacant space, you can say. Okay, uh, so hole is usually positively charged material and electron is negatively charged particle. Okay, so when you do this, this forms a diode. It is a P and junction diode. So P material you say when there is uh, holes and N material you say when there is electron. So a diode is usually called as P and junction diode because you know when you uh, put together these two materials a P type semiconductor and N type semiconductor it forms a depletion layer in between where you know uh, you can say that electrons and holes uh, come in contact with each other and this forms a layer where you know this there, there are no electrons or holes in this area it's somewhat like you know it will neutralize uh, each other so this is a depletion layer it's called a depletion layer this junction which it forms that's why it's called as p n junction diode so we uh, learned what a diode is and how it's constructed so what kind of diodes exist uh, say literally you know a diode uh, an LED, LED is a diode a laser is a diode and the most of the sensors where which are designed to receive IR rays is a diode it's an IR photodiode 
or uh, even a transistor is consists of two diodes so diodes are used in most of the components uh, a diode doesn't literally mean that component you know, which i showed previously uh, if you see this this cannot act as an led this cannot act as a, act as a transistor but you know the pn junctions which i am talking about which i explained a few days few uh, few moments back that pn junction is what uh, constitutes this led or transistor or whatever we spoke about so uh, on what basis do we usually uh, discriminate these diodes so the one i showed you now is a power diode so that uh, power is one of the main things which is help uh, which is used to discriminate the diodes based on what power you use and similarly this uh, forward voltage drop this is also uh, one of the important factors i would say and also the speed so first of all the power power usually consists of voltage and current so say for example uh, i am using a diode say 14007 diode this is a usually commercial level diode which you use and uh, most of the small small uh, circuits where the current doesn't cross more than 1 amp or maybe the voltage doesn't cross more than 24-30 volts then you can use 1 and 4 double zero seven diode and it will uh, it'll be able to handle those things but consider uh, a circuit which has uh, SMPS say a uh, switching mode power supply which is powering a load and I want to protect the SMP is from a reverse current and I put a diode here and the rating of this SMPS is say 10 amps at uh, some voltage everything is fine uh, say 24 volts and the load which I can share takes about 6 amps and say the same 24 volts then in that case I wouldn't go with this 1 and 4 double zero seven only reason because it is that this can handle at max 1 amp only if you do anything more than 1 amp mostly the diode will burn out that, that, that's what uh, I have experienced in my circuits where whenever I give a, a current more than 1 amp to this diode then that will burn out the diode it will heat up fast even at 1 amp if you use even if you start using the diode at around 800 milliamps to 1 amp the diode starts heating up a lot but it doesn't usually burn out so quickly but if you use a high current like this one then definitely it will burn out so in those cases, I will go for power diodes. One of the simple uh, power diodes I would say is 1954 series. Uh, usually it will be 540200, uh, I guess 04 or something. And the one which I showed you now, this one, is uh, 154502. It's a power diode. It, I think it's, it can handle a current of, uh, I guess, until 5 amps or 10 amps. I'm not exactly sure about the data set, data sheet. Uh, so uh, this can handle high current so in such uh, applications where I'm using high current then I'll go for something like this which is a power diode next forward voltage drop say for example my power source or SMPS can supply a voltage of 2 volts and my load uses See about 1.5 volts, so I'm giving 2 volts a little, a little more voltage and it doesn't damage, see. So I connect the negative terminal first and for the positive terminal, just to protect the power supply, I connect a diode. This is a silicon diode. So one thing you should know is silicon has a forward voltage drop of 0.7 volts, approximately. Okay. Similarly, germanium has a forward voltage drop of 0.4 volts. Considering these two cases, if I use a silicon diode, what will be the output voltage? Two voltage, two volts in the power supply and a forward voltage drop of 0.7 volts, which will give the output of 1.3 volts only. Will this suit this circuit? Definitely no. So what should I should choose? I should choose a germanium diode. Uh, there are many germanium diodes available in the market. Uh, they are low power, high power. I guess uh, one N three four A. I guess this is 
Uh, I, I guess this is a germanium diode, but this one is a low power one, so as I have told already two volts and very low current. So this should be fine, and this can handle I guess uh, voltages of I think 50 volts to 75 volts, anywhere around that. Uh, this diode. Uh, so I guess you know if you use this diode there, what will the voltage? It will be two volts minus 0.4 volt that will come around 1.6 volts, which is almost close. So in cases where you feel that the forward voltage drop matters, then you go for germanium diode, which has very low forward voltage drop. Speaking about the switching speed, so what is switching speed? Say for example, I have a circuit where the source switches from on to off and then on and again off. And how fast this switches speed matters to the load. And this is possible. So I connect a diode here. So say for example this uh, power supply switches the power, uh, switches the power uh, I mean the voltage uh, say at the speed of 1 megahertz or not even 1 megahertz just go for 100 kilohertz even 10 kilohertz if you want for that case so 100 <laughs> kilohertz 1 megahertz all these are you know high speed switching uh, application uh, frequencies so in this case what if I use 1 and 4 double zero seven? As far as I am aware, 1 and 4 double zero seven can't even take 10 kHz uh, because the speed at which this switch uh, switches the tra uh, this varies. The trans uh, the diode won't be able to change its state so fast. So that is what is switching speed. That so the rate at which the diode can change from on state to off state with respect to the change in power supply. That is what switching speed speed is. So in such cases where uh, the switching speed is higher like this, we can use high speed switching circuits. Uh, one of them I would say is 1M4148. Again, this is a silicon diode. Okay, so this is one of the high speed switching diodes. I guess uh, even 1M414 series all uh, uh, high speed switching. So in, in such cases where it can use a high speed switching, you can go for diodes like this. But one of the uh, thing is, say for example, I'll write down all the diodes. So one of the disadvantages in each, uh, each one has its own disadvantages. So if you consider this, switching speed is something which you cannot handle. Similarly, 195402, even this cannot handle switching speed. This has a reliable switching speed but still the problem is the power it cannot take in enough power 1 and 4148 high speed switching diode but the power loss is less similarly power loss is I mean the power it can handle is very uh, less I think this can handle a voltage of 75 volts at I guess 200 milliamps that's quite less for a power uh, for a power diode, so this cannot be used as a power diode, can only be used in applications where very low current and low voltage are involved. Similarly, going for the forward voltage drop, all this fail for forward voltage drop except for this one, where this one has very uh, low forward voltage because it's made of germanium. So, coming to the applications of diodes, uh, where do you use these diodes? Let me tell you one of my experiences. Uh, Diode is the first ever component which I used in my circuit and the first circuit which I made was a bridge rectifier. So what is a bridge rectifier? Uh, say for example you have a signal where the voltage changes multiple times in a certain time period. So say this is 0 volts and this is 5 volts and minus 5 volts. And you have a load which can operate only at DC low, DC voltages. So what will happen if you give this to this DC low? There's chance that the uh, load might burn up, it might uh, get short circuited or get, get damaged, or it might not even operate. It might not even respond for AC voltages. One such load I would say is a DC motor. If you take a small toy motors or DC motors, they won't operate uh, if you give 
and AC voltage to it. It'll vibrate a little, but it won't uh, you won't see the shaft moving. So in that cases, you definitely need a DC voltage to run this DC motor. So what can you do to change this AC to DC? In such case, the important component which plays the role is a diode. So what is a DC current? So DC is direct current. So it won't change, it will be like this. It will be a constant voltage. So how can you use a diode to get this voltage? Say for example, you are giving a voltage like this as input to a diode. What will happen to the output? Considering this is 5 volts and minus 5 volts, initially the diode will be in off state here, 0 volts. And when the voltage increases to 5 volts, it will start conducting until 0 volts again. At 0 volts, and after 0 volts in the negative voltage, the voltage on this side is more than this one. So what will happen? It won't conduct. This will act as an open circuit like this. I'm sorry. It will act as an open circuit like this. So it won't conduct. So in this time, it will be off. And again, when it starts rising here, it will start connecting again like this. So finally, from this, what you will get is this. This is what you get from this one. So now, we don't have a signal which varies from 0 to 5 and 5 to minus 5, but we have a partially uh, DC signal. It's called pulsated DC signal because it's DC because the voltage is constant at the peak, but it keeps varying from 0 to the peak value. So this is called pulsated DC. How to convert this to uh, pure DC? Usually we can connect a capacitor in parallel like this. So this is AC. In the output what will happen is, when it conducts in this direction, the capacitor charges to the full peak value and while off state, the capacitor starts discharging slowly but before it could discharge completely, it will again start charging because the diode starts conducting. So the signal uh, will be the signal might look something like this. So if you can use more filtering, I mean the bigger capacitors, the signal will be like this. All this depends on the filter which you put here. If you put a very good filter, I mean uh, <coughs> I mean a very high capacitance, then you'll get a pure filter without any ripples. Uh, these are called ripples. You know, usually when a signal is like this, and if you have light voltage variations in the top like this, a very small minor variation, these are called ripples. So uh, to avoid all this, you can use a better filter, probably a parallel capacitor or a series inductor, both act as a low-pass filter. So uh, these can be used to filter the signal. And now you'll get a DC signal. When you give this to this DC motor, it will surely work. And this is how you convert an AC signal to DC signal. And we'll now discuss what are the different types of rectifiers. So basically three types of rectifiers. One is half-wave rectifier, next is full-wave rectifier, and there's bridge-wave rectifiers. So what is a half-wave rectifier? Say for example, you're getting a signal like this, and you give a diode like this. This will convert this to this. So this is a half-wave rectifier. Why? Because it's only giving output for one half of the signal. The other half, this one, and this one, and this one, these are missing in the signal. What is a full-wave rectifier? Consider a center trap transformer. So uh, a center trap transformer always has two terminals in the input and three terminals in the output. Okay. So it might be 0, plus 5, and minus 5 volts, considering this signal. So this is 0, 5 volts, and minus 5 volts. So for this, you connect two diodes like this, and join the ends, and you take this as the negative terminal, and this becomes the positive terminal. In this case, when there's a positive signal in this, it will start conducting and give you a positive signal. And in the negative signal, this will be increasing. So in that case, again, this will be rising like this because I have connected, connected it like this. Again, the same, first one, second one. So this is how you will get for the full wave rectifier. 
coming to the bridge wave rectifier bridge wave rectifier so what happened to a bridge wave rectifier is so if you see here you need three terminals from the transformer to construct a full wave rectifier that is the disadvantage of full wave rectifier also the voltage here is peak to peak is around 10 volts because it's plus 5 minus of minus 5 that is gives you around plus 5 that is 10 volts but here you are getting only 5 volts so that is one of the disadvantages and coming to the half wave rectifier as you already know there is second half is not uh, sent to the output and it's cut off so that's again a disadvantage so these two are disadvantages of uh, these both rectifiers so let's see which rectifier now so consider a transformer with two terminals for this you construct a bridge like this A bridge rectifier always needs four diodes and you can operate it using two terminals. So the AC signal is connected to these two terminals uh, and the output is taken from these two terminals. If you see the current diode should be flowing like this and like this. Just make sure you connect the diodes in a proper manner. In this, both the anodes of diodes are connected at this point which forms a positive and both the cathodes of these diodes are connected here which forms a negative. And the points where one anode is connected to other cathode and here, these form the input terminals of the AC signal. So output will be, say for example I gave the same signal, it's 5 volts to 0 to minus 5 volts. The output will be 10 volts and the same signal. So this is one of the advantages of a bridge rectifier. Usually whatever power supplies, whatever circuits we make for the power supplies or converting AC to DC, this is what we use. We, uh, uh, not many circuits and not many manufacturers use a center tap or I mean, a half wave or full wave rectifiers for construction of a DC converter. And they use this alone. There are many circuits around the internet where people use different uh, diodes for construction of this uh, Bridge rectifier. You can use one and five four zero two also uh, for uh, constructing this bridge rectifier based on the current or power what uh, your circuit is using or can handle. If I'm using a power supply which gives around few amps only, then I'll go for uh, one and five uh, one and four double zero seven. But if I'm using a circuit which uses more than three amps or five amps current, I'll go for a high power diodes. And not just that, even uh, now in market they are. Uh, bridge rectifiers available which come in, in form of a block, a small square with four terminals on, uh, on four sides. Th these are designed to handle high currents. You need not construct a bridge rectifier with diodes. You can directly purchase one of these uh, rectifiers and they will operate as a DC converters. So that was uh, my lecture about diodes. That's all for today. And if you like this video, just give a thumbs up and please share the video with your friends. And thank you again for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.